Hi, this is Phil and Wings from Skeetalk.com, and we have a cage match comparison about two heavy hitters for 2024-25 in that mid 80 millimeter wide segment. What's a cage match comparison? It's when we take two popular skis that when you walk into a ski shop and you're considering both of these skis and you're trying to pick which one you want, you're not quite sure. We're not saying one is better than the other, but we're going to try and help you decipher which one's better for you. Now, Winks, you've familiar with both of these brands, skied on a lot of their models in this range of a ski. What are you looking for in, in a high performance, wide body front side ski? Oh, I think I want something that's stiff, okay, quick and reactive, and just really has a lot of energy coming out of the turn. Yeah. Well, we've got that in spades with both of these skis. And this, I mean, these two skis are really tough because they are very similar in design and what they want to do. But we've got some nuanced differences. Red's the, the Q9.8 came out a couple seasons ago. This is this new generation of the graphics on it, which I think is really good in the orange. I'm still at the camp. If it's a ski that's named Redster, should have some red in it. Got to be red. <laughs> got to be red. There's got to be some red there. And it's got the atomic uh, system binding on that. That's the way it comes with it. It's a flat, basically a flat ski with a plate mounted on it. And we do have our Revotech that's coming over from their race ski. So we've got a ski that's going to be really quiet on the snow. Now, the Curve GT85 is all new for 2024-25 from Fisher. We did see an early introduction on this ski here. That's when we had the ski out a lot on the snow. This does come also with a system binding on it. It's going to come with a Tyrolia binding on it. And you also can upgrade it to the protector if you choose. It's about $100 more. I'm a believer of that protector. And I think that's a really good consideration to go. Again, you've got some experience with that binding. Yeah, I mean, to me, if you're going to go ahead and like buy a ski that comes with that system and you have that option, there's no downside to getting the protector. No. I mean, you already have the plate. You already sit a little higher off the ski. Yep. So you might as well just get the added safety benefit, even if it costs just a bit more. No, I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, just think about what your insurance deductible is. Hopefully, you'll never need the release aspect of it. And I'll be honest with you, I've got thousands and thousands of vertical feet on the protective body. I think the performance is there. I like the elasticity in that heel, which allows that ski really to keep a little bit quieter on the back because there is some absorption there. Then obviously you do have the protection aspect of it, but it, it is not all protection driven. There is some performance in this binding also. It's still Tyrolia. It's still Tyrolia. And what we're seeing the difference with these two skis, and we get into nuances, and that is really going to come down to the tip design of these skis. A little bit shorter, a little more abrupt here, a little bit of a snub toe, snub nose. This, the fish is going to be a little more gradual in here. And again, we're into nuances. So what is that going to mean for you? The atomic, the turning on the, on the ski is going to be a little bit quicker. The fish is going to be a little more relaxed in that turn in. Yeah. So if you find yourself venturing a little bit into the bumps in some mixed conditions, that's where the fissure is going to be a little bit better for you. If you're 90% of the groomers, again, the atomic, the register, this is a fully full length ski, which means there's no early rise in the tip. So it's a full contact ski. So that is definitely going to be more reactive on those firmer conditions. I mean, last year when I was playing around with the carve system on it, I think I had my, one of my highest scores on this ski, which at 85 under foot says a lot about this ski. Yeah, I've definitely noticed that too. Um, you know, having those, those, you know, full carving skis with those, you know, tips that just really hug the snow, yep. I tend to just have that quicker engagement and I tend to up my scores. 
Yeah. Now, and what also like with these skis here, you really buy these skis a lot on the turn shape you want, not only just the length of the ski. So if you you can see the ski around head height or eyebrow height and get it a little more reactive a ski, but if you want to let that ski run, or if you're skiing a lot of bigger mountain runs, longer runs, I wouldn't hesitate maybe to consider that next size up in those skis, those bigger, stronger guys. So it's a balance of power and finesse. I mean, we're definitely a little more on the power side of the scale here. The fissure here is going to be a little towards the middle. I find a little bit bigger of a sweet spot in the fissure. Uh, it's not as fall off the bone easy as the old RC 186 GT was. Yeah. That he was really nice and relaxed on it, and it really wanted your input to get going. With this one here, I find boom, it's there a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and I think I think a lot of that too is. Some of that some of that tip shape too and just yep. some of that rise. Yep. Yeah. And the other nice thing with both of these skis is the finish process. Out of the box, both of these skis, the base structures of two are the two of the better ones that we've seen in the industry. Yeah. Both these manufacturers take that extra level of care for both of these skis. So who are they for? Who are they not for? Again, we have a little more power here on the Redster. If you're gearing a little more on the groomers and maybe venturing a little bit of those mixed conditions or the conditions change and you don't feel like going back to the car, still a great choice here. The Fisher here is a little more relaxed and tip, but it's a little more willing to venture into mixed conditions. I mean, skiing over Mount Rose a lot. We've got the shoots there. Spring conditions got a little bit heavy this year. The Atomic, I question myself going into those mixed conditions. The Fisher, no problem. Let's go over. Uh, yeah. Let's let's play around in there. And again, getting back to that protector binding, uh, I've been playing with different lateral release retentions on the protector, running it at one of the lowest settings. The elasticity, I have yet to pre-release out of that protector. I think they did a beautiful job with it. So we've got two really fun skis out there because remember, folks, skiing, skiing is, is fun. fun. I'm Mario. This is Brian. We're the Ski Bum Podcast, and skiing is fun. Skiing is fun. If you enjoyed this informative video, hit that bell, subscribe, so that you'll stay up to date on the new videos, and check out SkiTalk.com for more ski-related content. Also, please follow SkiTalk.com on all of your social media channels. No scenes from Hot Tub Time Machine were reenacted during the production of this video. <laughs>